Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to walk through the first practical exam, a sample of it of course, so you guys understand how J units work and how and what has to be done in the exam environment. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to import the project from an archive file for which we go to file, import, under general, existing projects into workspace. Select archive file and choose sample practical exam 1 template. You'll see that there is a project inside this archive file and choose finish. The project contains a source folder it also contains a PDF file which contains the instructions. Please make sure you read the instructions very carefully even before you come to the exam so you understand what is required and what is not allowed. The only file that you are allowed to modify is all in one.java. At the top, write your name and student ID. Do not modify any method header which means do not modify any return type, any keyword, name of the method or the parameters. The first question is to complete getters, setters, constructors and other methods of a class. In this sample exam the class holds the, in, uh, holds the details of a gradebook entry, which is basically a mark between 0 and 100. Do not modify the getter. The logic for the setter has been provided. Set the mark to the parameter m. If m is less than 0, mark should become 0. If m is more than 100, mark should become 100. Otherwise, mark should become m. So let's say if m is less than 0, mark becomes 0. If m is less than 100, more than 100, mark becomes 100. And let's say you make a mistake and write mark becomes m. So basically what we are doing is, if the parameter was less than 0, it became 0. Of course, the parameter cannot be both more, less than 0 and more than 100. But then unconditionally, you're assigning mark to m. So it doesn't matter what m was, whether it was minus 50 or 120, it will become that value. So there's a bug. When we go to the test file, double click on the test set mark, which is a tester for set mark, and run this. You notice that there's an error it says java.lang.assertion error expected 0.0, .0 but was minus 5.4. At which line? At line 21. You can see that line number 20 attempts to set the mark to minus 5.4. So it should become 0 with a tolerance of 0 0.01. But it says that it was minus 5.4. So go to the setter. This time, you can place breakpoints if you want. You can trace your code visually if you want. If you find trouble, then you can trace it manually as well. So you can see that the value of m was minus 5.4. Is it less than 0? Yes. So mark becomes 0. But the second if condition is independent of the first one. Is minus 5.4 more than 100? No. So mark does not become 100. And then unconditionally mark becomes m, which is minus 5.4. So these should be mutually exclusive. Only one of those should happen. Save this, run the test, and it passes. And your score is 15 out of 100 now. Gradebook entry set the mark to 0 0.1 using the setter. So you're going to call the setter with the value 0 0.1. test gradebook entry. So that's the test for the constructor, the default constructor. We run this and you can see that 
when a new gradebook entry object is created, its mark should be 0 0.1. Set grade, gradebook entry double M, set the mark to M using the setter, so set mark to M. Run this test and you can see you get marks for this test. You can also run all the tests together simply by going to the file and not selecting any test and running it. You can see that there are three tests have passed and four have failed so far. Compare to gradebook entry other, return one if calling objects mark is more than parameter objects mark, minus one if it's less, zero if they are equal. You can access the calling object using para using keyword this. So if this dot mark is more than other, which is the parameter's name, dot mark, return one. If this dot mark less than other dot mark, return minus one. Now I'll make a deliberate mistake. Let's say if this dot mark equals other dot mark return zero. This time your method will complain and the error is the method must return a result of type int. While mathematically your logic is correct, all three returns are conditional, which means that there is a possibility in terms of control flow that none of them are true. What you'll realize is that the third if is unnecessary because the only situation we will come here is if it was not more and not less, which means it is equal. So you can return zero. Save this, run the test, and now you get 40 marks, which is already pretty decent. Next, factorial. Return the product of all integers from 1 to n. Assume that n is more than 0. Again, I'll introduce a deliberate bug. We need to multiply all the numbers from 1 to n, including n. So make sure that it's less than, equal to, not less than. Each time, result becomes result multiplied by i, the current counter, and return the result. When you go to the test, and run the factorial test. It returns an error. Expected 120, but was 0 on line 75, which is factorial of 5. 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 is 120. This time, we'll debug using breakpoints. Enter the debug mode. And you can see it has entered factorial with n equals 5. Resume, result is 0, resume, i equals 1, result becomes 0 times 1, 0, i becomes 2, result becomes, result times i, which is again 0, i equals 3, result becomes 0 times 3, 0, 0 times 4, 0, 0 times 5, 0. Go back to the Java perspective by clicking the J icon on the top right. Fix your mistake, which is result should be initially one. Save it. And this time, run the test normally and it passes. You got select all and run again, you get 60 marks. Double total, double array. So your result is a double. You simply have to add all the items of the array. So I go from zero to less than array.length. Each time result becomes result plus the current item array. I. When the method finishes, return result. You'll see that there's a problem. It we haven't initialized the variable, so it should be initialized to zero in this case. Test total individually passes. 
The last method is an advanced method for intersection. Please note that if you got everything except the last question right, you already have 80 marks, which is very decent for almost all students. But if you're going to go into the distinction, high distinction category, you need to write an intersection method. It's, it's very helpful if you take a look at the sample tests. And here you can see that 1729 and 85167, the intersection is 1, 7, 1 and 7 only. Because 2 is only in array A, so is 9, 8, 5, and 6 are only in array B. Please read the instructions carefully as well. You can assume that it's not null. Each item in the array is different from others. So each item exists only once. Don't erase this return statement. Just comment it to keep it at the end. First, we're going to count how many items are actually common. So what we'll do is I'll go through every item of A. And for every item of A, I'll go through every item of B. Now, please note that just because this logic is valid for this program doesn't mean it's valid for all the programs. So make sure that you understand what the problem is and apply the correct logic. So we're comparing every item of A with every other item of B only because we know that all the items in an array are different. If AI becomes equal to BK, if AI is equal to BK, it means that there are similar items and count increases by one. We could just go through other items as well, or we could just break out of this inner loop. It's purely up to you. We don't need to. When this finishes, you know how many items should be there in the intersection array, so you can create an array of that size. For all we know, count could be zero, which is fine. We're going to do the same thing again, except this time we need to put these items into result. So every time we find a common item, result destination index will become AI or BK, and destination index increases by one because we've put one more item. We can return result when this finishes. We go to the test, run the test intersection, and it passes. Select all, run it, score is 100, everything passes. At this point of time, you can copy your all-in-one.java by pressing Control c So go to all-in-one.java, press Control c and in H drive or wherever you need to submit the file, press Control V, and you can see that all in Java, all in one dot Java is there. And that's it. That's what you're going to do during the practical exam. I hope you benefit from this video, and all the best with your practical exams.